Well, whatever you're seeing now, Timo, with the longest business title ever, head of marketing promotion, digital enterprise factory automation, wow, is an expert in machine building as well. And our next colleague, Rudy Pries, is also an expert in that field. And they will let you more about digitalization in the machine building. Digitalization. Incredibly exciting. Enthusiasm is what drives us. To be successful in the future, together. Digitalization. That's the future. Yeah, welcome again. Good morning. Welcome to the Thought Leaders Forum. In the next 10 minutes, Rudi Bries from Product Management and I, Timo Mühlhausen, we will give you an insight about how digitalization can give advantage for the machine and building industry. Do you remember when this Industry 4.0 initiative was started? I think everybody was talking about it, and is even talking about it today. That was 2012 already, a long time ago, five years, and the ages of digitalization, running, time is running quickly. But do you remember 2015? We've been showing here on the booth already a machine from the company Optima how lot size one production in this serious production is possible. So in the meantime, there are a lot of examples all around here at that booth where digitalization is really giving advantage during the product development or machine development. So let's have a closer look. What does it mean, product development or machine development? It's very important to consider the entire product life cycle. This product life cycle for the machinery industry starts with the concept phase. This is exactly the time where the consideration of the customer's requirements have to be designed into this future machine concept. Then the engineering starts, followed by the commissioning. I would say these three steps are the most important part from a machine building industry's point of view. And then service, operation and services follows. But there is something on top which is called MindSphere. You see it also here in the booth. This is giving new advantages and new possibilities when we talk about the digital twin. But first, let's go through it and let's have a closer look into the concept fast. I mentioned it already. It's the time where you have to consider the customer's requirements. So you have two major questions, I would say. First is, which kinematics is the best to choose? So what kind of mechanical elements do you really have to design into the machines? And how can you take advantage of maybe modules you defined previously from further machines, or maybe based on standards you evoked? So Rudy, this is really something which makes me a little bit curious, because what kind of possibilities is digitalization giving me to define the best machine concept? Yeah, Timo, this is a good question. And we see it here on the screen. Um, we have just the right tools for the machine builders to challenge, to master the challenges of the design phase. And here, with the Mechatronics concept designer, you would create your digital twin. And in this animation, you see such a digital twin in action. So how would you do this? How would you just get started? So first of all, you start with a rough construction. Like, you start with the basic building, blo building blocks, and then you would gradually refine the machine concept, and step by step, you create an exact 3D moduling of all your machine parts. So, and for the review, you can see it here, you don't even have to build an expensive prototype. I mean, you can just start the simulation, and you can evaluate the productive efficiency of your machine even before building it. So, uh, one of my fav absolute favorites here is to put on 3D glasses to virtually step into the machine and to see how it works from the inside out. Also, by the way, super impressive way to present to your customers. It's a good live preview of the future machine. So what you have now here is a digital prototype. And it contains all the features. And you can continue to evolve your concept based on this. So what do our customers say? Well, we've seen it 20 times already. It's, it's the company Bausch & Schwebel. And they built special machines for the pharmaceutical industry. So in the past, Bausch and Ströbel built a full-scale wooden model of the entire machine. 
to get some insights to evaluate the mechanical properties to see how the ergonomics work today. Bauschen Ströbel uses digitalization from Siemens uh, for a faster and much more flexible product de development. So you see, digitalization is here and, and offers great value to machine builders, Timo. That helps me really to find the best machine concept. But after the concept phase, the engineering phase starts. And that's exactly the time where I, as an automation engineer, start to think about how can I put or develop the motion and the PLC program, and this in parallel, working with each other perfectly. And what kind of libraries can I use based on existing machine modules, for instance? How can, how can I modularize the machine, and how can I simplify, maybe, or trivialize the, I would say, complexity of a modern um, packaging or filling machine? So, Woody, there is something from digitalization offered by Siemens? Yes, there is indeed, Timo. And the keywords here are modularization and reuse. I mean, you as machine builders would do it the same way, wouldn't you? You would use standardized and proven machine elements again and again, because it makes sense. So you can do the exact same thing with the software components. How would you do this? You can use the openness interface of the TIA portal to automate your project generation. So you can add ready-made and like 100% tested program blocks. And this way, you can master the variety of your innovative machine concepts. So and on top of that, to automate your program generation even further, you can use the multi-vendor data inter interchange format automation ML. You could export the hardware and the signals from ECAT and have them automatically generated into your TIA portal project. That's efficient engineering. So here we have an, ex an excellent example of modular machine engineering. It's the company SN Machinebau. They are leading experts in horizontal packaging machines. And they face many challenges day in and day out. It's high flexibility. They have to co comply with international standards. And they face ever f shorter product life cycles. So, and Bossa Packaging puts digitalization to use and benefits from a more efficient PLC programming and can maintain a high software quality. This is great stuff, Timo, isn't it? Yeah, that's really making the engineering quicker. But I think, but I think the most time-consuming time during a product life cycle is the commissioning time. This is exactly coming after engineering fast. And here, it comes out really how mechanics, software, and electrics are really working perfectly with each other. So how good the machine design and the machine concept was really developed, and how can I optimize now the previously validated program code now with a real machine? How can I optimize it now by using, I would say, the digital enterprise suite components from Siemens? What is the best way to reduce commissioning time? Timo, this is a great question, and you're exactly right. During commissioning, this is where it really shows how well your mechanics, your electric, and your software design fits together. Because here, you have to put it all together in one place. Um, I can still vividly remember my very first commissioning. You can imagine it was a portal kinematics, and there was a motor mounted the other way around. And I start the machine, and the entire machine jerks and stops. And what happened was the PLC program um, yeah, triggered the wrong direction for the drive. And I mean, today, this wouldn't happen to me anymore. So today, we introduce the Sematic Machine Simulator. What this is, is a turnkey solution for your virtual commissioning. What's in here? The first part is the Mechatronics Concept Designer. You have seen it in the design phase already. And here, you would reuse your digital twin to simulate the kinematics to see if any possible collisions occur. And simultaneously, PLC Sim Advanced would simulate your PLC program and put it all together. So what's in here for you? So in the safe environment of the simulation, you can really virtually validate your entire machine, your mechanics, the behavior of the machine, and your program. You can correct errors even before they occur in the real machine. And this saves time, valuable time, during the actual commissioning of the real machine. So it's great benefits here. And uh, another great example for this is uh, the company SN Machinebau. 
another company that builds sophisticated packaging machines. They have high performance requirements, flexibility requirements. And you can see here in the picture, they built open and modular machine design, which makes it even more challenging to, yeah, to, to, to the commissioning, right? And with virtual commissioning, a same machine book can save time up to 50% for the commissioning of the PLC program. That's impressive, isn't it? Yeah, that's really impressive. By reducing the most time-consuming fast during a product lifecycle by 50%, this is making it much more quicker to come to the market with a new machine. But when you think after these three steps, the life cycle is over, it's even not. I would say the second life of the machine is starting because that's the moment when you, as a machine builder, hand over the machine to your customer. Wouldn't it be nice to stay in touch with the machine from that time on? Wouldn't it be nice to know in which kind of performance range the machine is really used? Think about it. You define the machine, you have the requirements, you have a contract, you define what kind of quality, how long the machine, the life cycle would be by operating. So wouldn't it be nice to really ensuring that and to know, okay, in which real performance environments this machine is, was used globally? There is an average export rate by the German machine builders by 85%. So that means 85% of the machines from Germany, they are exported to some other countries. It's similar for some other big machine building companies in Europe, uh, countries in Europe. So staying in touch with the machine, what kind of possibilities would I have and what kind of conclusions could I take out? Timo, this, these are great questions. And also here we have the answer. It's omnipresent. You can see it all over the booth. You could easily connect your machine to the Mindsphere Cloud. So what's in, here, in it for you? You can keep in touch with your machine wherever it is in the world. You can export and still keep in touch with your machine. Um, we have recently implemented, a, implemented a, a fascinating example of uh, such an application with a customer. It's a grooving machine that cuts grooves into blank boards. And we recorded the cutting length of the knife in the Mindsphere Cloud. And our customer, the machine builder, can then track the, the knife wear. So whenever it loses its sharpness, our customer can send out a technician, a service engineer, and arrange a just-in-time replacement. That's perfect service. Yeah. And uh, on top of that, he can use the, make use of the insights of the, of the utilization of the actual machine. So, and therefore, he can optimize his machine concept based on that. You see, Timo, here, we have great possibilities with the Mindsphere Cloud. It's really great possibilities. And what you have seen here also in the presentations was completely based on information from the virtual environment. So we, what we've shown you is a possibility to develop your own digital twin. The digital twin about the product, the production, and the performance. That gives you a closed loop scenario in order to simulate and validate everything in the virtual world before you even invest one real resource in the real world for building up the machine, mock-ups or whatever, or commissioning. When you think about this, is still a story, please. Go to our proof points. We have a lot of these machines standing here. This Bausch & Strubel machine you have seen here, we have also standing in the center of our booth as a real machine, not longer as a wooden model, but the real, um, model from, um, the real machine with the digital twin in NXMCD and how we can generate these curve diagrams, for instance, for the drive commissioning and so, and how you can reduce your time uh, to market by using this nice virtual model and the digital twin and the entire value chain for the field PG is also there, a robot cell, a TIA digitalization showcase, which allows you to identify very quickly the first steps from an automation point, engineer's point of view um, to develop your own digitalization strategy.